shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Yeah, good morning to you. Trust you're good this morning. We're sharing truth this morning on handicapped species. And that's from John chapter 2, 23 to John 3, 6 thereabout. You are warmly welcome to the Really Really Knowing God channel with me, Pastor Larry Adeneko. This channel is all packaged together to inspire and inform you into the real knowledge of the very real God that we serve. And everything is being powered by the Pastor Larry Adeneko Center for Into Spiritual, the place. This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone in the crown of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're done with spiritual chocolate and now want the balanced diet of the Word of God. This is the place to be. Hallelujah. Shall we pray together this morning? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this morning. We give you praise and glory. You've been good. Your mercy is endure forever. Father God, we pray as we share with your people this morning, may we come to appreciate how that the person who is not born again needs you, needs your Holy Spirit. And the Lord, when we have the Holy Spirit, we make something big out of our lives with it. Thank you, Heavenly Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, John, let's try to end John 2 and go on into the third one now, 23, 23 from John 2. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself to them, because he knew all men, and had no need that anyone should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Let's try to round this off quite quickly and go into some other important things in chapter 3. It says that people believed in him, and um, obviously they, 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 they wanted to come after him and say, Ah, sir, you are fantastic, you are this, and uh, see what God has done through you, and all. He said they believed in him, no, not more than that. But what follows it? He says, But. Jesus did not commit himself to them. So obviously they made some moves. But Jesus was very, very careful. It says that he did not commit himself to them because he knew all men. And he doesn't he didn't have any need that everybody should test because he knew what was in man. Praise the Lord. So you see, they made attempts to um I don't know how to describe it now, maybe put him on a pedestal, uh come around him and give him titles and call him names and whatever I don't know uh, but Bible says that Jesus didn't buy it he didn't go for all of that he didn't commit himself to any of them because he knew man and he knew what was in man now the Bible says some very interesting things in the Old Testament about what was in man it's not something for us to begin to highlight in the uh, New Testament but to say that man in his natural state I like to call it handicapped I like to call it not quite how God wants him to be. I like to put it this way, that um, not very interesting, not so att attractive, not so fascinating, not the kind of um, thing or person or concept or idea or phenomenon to which you want to commit yourself. And that's why Jesus said he didn't commit himself unto them because he knew man and he knew what was in man. Man that is not born again man that has not been redeemed man that has not been converted man that has not uh given his life to christ man who doesn't have his his name written down in the lamb's book of life this that's the kind of man being described here it's not for everybody not to say that oh man is man whether born again or not no we are different our names are written down in the lamb's book of life we have a different dna we have a divine nature attitude Hallelujah. And so these men or the man that Jesus that is being referred to here are people that are in their natural state. Man in his natural state is a handicapped species. And you need the life of God. You need that thing from God called Zoe to transform that and to make you someone God can commit to. God commits to us. If God commits to us, yes, indeed, Jesus commits to us. He says, he who touches you, touches the apple of my eye. That's what the Bible says. And God calls us his family. He says we are his own. Hallelujah. So indeed, he commits to us because, you see, we are not part of the natural man. In, in chapter 3, it says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler 
or leader of the Jews, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do this signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? So you will understand why I went into all I did at the end of chapter 2 before we entered into chapter 3. I try to say a man that is born again is different from a man that was not born again. That was how I ended up in chapter 2. And now look at this story of this Pharisee named Nicodemus. He came to Jesus at night. I'm sure I'm sure you understand why he would come to Jesus at night. Uh, what would the other Pharisees say? He couldn't really come during the day. He was part of them, probably put his hand around his beard, you know, when they were asking him all kind of questions. In his own mind, he knew that there was something different about this man. This man was special. There was something to, to, to talk about or to think about this man. I have to find a way to meet this man. And then after thinking, he concluded, it can only be at night when nobody was there. This happens with secret disciples. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So he went to see Jesus and says, look, we know that you are you are actually come from God. I, uh, your, your spirit and my spirit, there's something that, you know, you know, you know. And as he went on, Jesus didn't allow him to go the way he wanted to go. Like I've shared with us from John. And I said, we're going to see more from Jesus. He says that as he went on, before he could ask any further question, Jesus cut in and said, Listen, I say to you, surely, unless a person is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He hadn't even asked his question. He, he you know, he was going, he, he just began. You see, we know you are from God. Jesus caught that thing. Remember what I thought about seizing the discussion. Jesus seized the discussion. He wanted to determine the direction of the discussion. The man hasn't even yet asked any question. Jesus said, surely I say to you, and then went on to deliver his own. He wanted the discussion to go his own way, not Nicodemus' his own way. And it's something you need to learn, especially when it comes to witnessing, that when you are witnessing, do not let anybody hijack the discourse. Make sure that the discourse still goes in the way that God will have it go and, and deliver your stuff properly and, and, and let it uh, land the necessary punch that will set the person thinking and probably lead him to making a decision at the end of the day. And Nicodemus now said, how can this be? Remember where he started, Jesus' punchline had changed everything. He now had to respond to what Jesus said. How can this be? Uh, can a person enter his mother's womb into the second time, you know, and be born? Uh, the man now had begun to think. Jesus responded again and said, surely, or most assuredly, or very, as your, I don't know the version you are reading, uh, unless you are born of the water and of the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom. That which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not know that I say unto you, you must be born again. There's a little figure beside the born again, and then he wrote, born from above, somewhere on the margin of my Bible, uh, in that uh, verse 7. So you see, Jesus had seized the discussion and he was trying to make the man see the importance of being born again. We all got born once, physically, but we also need to get born spiritually. That is the again there. We all got born by our mothers upon the earth. We also need to be born from above. That is the second birth being spoken about there. And that's why I said in the you know, margin of my Bible, it says, from above. So we need to be born, first of all, we have been born, pardon, first of all, by our mothers upon the earth. We need to be born spiritually from above as well. And this is very, very important. It's something we are going to go over again when we return to the, uh, to the Gospels. But please know that we are just trying to lay a foundation. A man called Nicodemus, a Pharisee, he was a seeker. He wanted to know better. There are many of us who are seekers today. We want to know better. We want to understand this whole thing better. We want to get it. And I pray that God will cause somebody to get it this morning in Jesus' mighty name. But that Lord, by the grace of God, we who are already Christians will allow the Spirit of God to help us, you know, relate the message in a way the people are, can, can, can understand, can relate with, so that they can get it and give their lives to Christ just like we have done. I want to say to you, like many people who are uh, listening or watching or viewing this morning, this born again life is fantastic. It's so interesting. We can't trade it for anything. And we invite you to come over and join us. Thank you very much for listening this morning or for participating, for sharing time together with us this morning. It's good that you are there. 
that's why we are here please remember to like remember to share remember to subscribe and to press that notification button if you haven't done so before now so that you can be notified when our posts come up have a wonderful day